Political strategist this afternoon, Graham Morris and Bruce Hawker. Very good to see you both. Thanks for joining us. The live sheep trade, uh, the private members' bill introduced by Susan Lee today, would phase out the industry within five years. The Prime Minister making it clear he does not support that. The government's policy is to tighten regulations to fix the industry. Graham, what do you think about the uh, divide within the government and how this issue is going to be playing out in the community? <coughs> and it seems to me this is a story of two states. The bottom end of Susan Lee's electorate, one ram from Banook or Wanganella, is worth around $40,000, one ram. In Western Australia, if you sell a sheep, if you get 100 bucks, you're happy. Now, it, it, it's half a billion dollars trade in this live sheep export. This government is not going to kill it off. Not. You know, they made such a fuss over live cattle exports to Indonesia when the Labor Party did that, so it's not going to happen. But it does seem to me that there are a number of things that the government can insist on and should insist on, and by the look of it is going to insist on, to clean this up. But the idea you kill off an industry and you kill off a whole heap of farmers' incomes is ridiculous. I, look, Susan is passionate about this, but her electorate is different. And there are many, many parts of Australia where they just could not wear the loss of this yeah, and industry. It, it, the geographic divide is worth pointing to, Bruce, because the eastern state sheep farmers, uh, you know, I don't think many of them at all uh, export live. That all comes out of WA. Look, there may be knock-on effects to them if you ban the trade, but... Um, it's also a big issue, of course, in a lot of urban areas as well. People do have genuine concerns about this. How do you see this as a political issue? Look, I think based on experience with the live cattle exports issue, that you have to hasten a bit slowly with these things. Be cautious about the immediate reaction to uh, the sight of these distressed animals, and they are terrible images. Um, and just make sure that you put in place uh, you know, a proper process to ensure that not only are the animals well uh, cared for as best as possibly can on that uh, journey to the Middle East, but also that our own industries aren't at too badly affected. So, to some extent, I agree with Graeme in this. You just have to be careful that you don't just jump in too quickly. That was really the experience with live uh, uh, beef exports to Indonesia. But, I mean, they're the talking about a five-year phase-out. That's, that's yeah. plenty of notice for the industry, yeah, if, look, if I, that's what you're going to do. Well, I, and, but I don't know, for example, you know, what the response is going to be to, uh, you know, frozen meat exports. It seems to me like a perfectly respectable thing to do and it creates jobs in Australia. So, on the face of it, it looks like a really good thing. But I just think we just need to make sure that, uh, you know, we don't rush to, uh, to, to institute something that may have a lot of uh, implications elsewhere. Right. Having said that, I think for, for Labor, it's a pretty... It, 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 most of its electorates are in urban areas and yeah, it's not going to feel the same sort of impact. Yeah, you, you haven't been this sensible for years. <laughs> Mate, must Speaking be, about... Must be all the mutton I've been eating. <laughs> Speaking about not rushing, um, we still don't have by-election dates for these five seats uh, that are up for grabs. The Speaker at the end of question time said it won't be June 23. He can at least tell us that because he's still negotiating with the Electoral Commission over the new rules for candidates to ensure we don't have any more dual citizenship uh, problems when they're elected. Uh, but we'll probably get the dates he indicated by the end of the week. Uh, Graham, what do you think about this? Labor made the point, well, you know, that, that's really... Uh, government policy matter, whether they want to change the rules for candidates. Surely the Electoral Commission just should get getting on with applying the existing law and holding these by-elections. Well, that's nice in theory, but as we've just seen, a whole heap of parliament parliamentarians aren't in the parliament because they didn't comply with the rules. Look, I, I, the, the Speaker's job is to uphold the dignity of the parliament. And by geez, if we had one of these by-elections and one of the candidates we find after the event was not eligible, then the whole thing blows up again. You know, if everyone just calms down, we'll have these by-elections probably end of June or the beginning of July. That's fine. But we need to make sure that it's not just, you know, not just the politicians who are re-standing. Yeah, bully for them. They caused it. But that the candidates themselves know the rules and have time to make sure that they're eligible. That's important. Yeah, Bruce, what do you think? Are you... Agitated by the delay? 
Uh, well, I think the uh, you know, it, it's in the gift of the government, essentially, to make a, uh, and the Prime Minister, really, to make a call about these things and he should get on with the business of doing it because those electorates effectively go unrepresented in the meantime and, of course, uh, it's good for the government to be able to have this uh, sweet little majority that they've got in the parliament. So I don't think they're going to be in any great rush to do it and, uh, and I think that's a shame. But I, I, at the end of the day, I don't think too much is going to come out of that. It, it, most people are going to be prepared to wait uh, for, the, for the elections. And, my golly, if, the, if any of these candidates have got it wrong... Yeah, uh, then that, that would not be a good look. That would be bad for them <laughs> and for the party parliament. secretaries. <laughs> yeah, and, and, for the, and for the parliament. Um, now, look, Graeme, just on the by-elections, uh, Dean Smith uh, is adamant that Liberals should run in Perth. He reckons they can, in fact, win in Perth um, and goes through the reasons why. Their vote's been increasing gradually and got to a record level, uh, you know, beat the other parties in the primary vote in, in 2016. He thinks Labor's on the nose there now once again. W what do you think? Well, I hope they... I thought this time last week not running was stupid. I, I don't understand not running in Perth. You know, there was a time when Ross McLean, a Liberal, held the seat. It's a long time ago, but he held it, in my memory. And, and look, look, I've run, helped run, seven, eight, nine by-elections. Um, things, things happen in by-elections. Just imagine, it, it, you know, it, say the Libs are starting with 40% of the vote. With a terrific candidate... Um, a, a couple of issues that run way out of control for Bill Shorten, all of a sudden you might have the unthinkable and a government actually winning a seat off the opposition by jingoes, the political ramifications, that'd be huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've got to, you to be uh, in it to, to win it, Bruce. Oh, look, it's pretty gutless on their part, I think, and most people would think that. They uh, really should have a go. And, frankly, when it comes around to the general election, they are going to run a candidate. They're not going to leave... Perth or Fremantle uncontested. They're going to run candidates there, if for no other reason, to make sure that they get a, uh, a, a showing in their Senate vote. The so, Senate, exactly. Yeah. So, and if they're worried about cost, just restrict the budget to what, you, what you're going to get in public funding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. it's and, bad form know. on their part. Uh, look, the, um, the Labor Party, the government, trying to throw as much as they can at Bill Shorten, uh, Bruce, in relation to the CFMEU, or CFMMEU, uh, as it's now called, you know, Peter Dutton making references, as he's done a few times, to bikey links, uh, and you join the dots then, the CFMEU linked to Bill Shorten, uh, ipso facto, you know, the bloke's a crook. Um, <laughs> what do you think? Well, that's a, that's a With clear John line. Sick, uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, with John Setker, um, uh, you know, dominating much of the news uh, in recent days, is this a problem for, for Labor and for Bill Shorten, who's often accused of being beholden to the CFME? He's a distraction uh, and he's an unwelcome distraction, this guy. Uh, he's not really doing anything to help the Labor Party. Uh, it's, a, it's a union that sometimes donates to the Greens, sometimes donates to the Labor Party. Uh, I think he'd be better off uh, just shutting up. I don't think he's going to do that because uh, I think he wants to throw his weight around. And, frankly, you know, there are some images which don't look well, don't look good for, for Labor with some of these union characters. Now, 99% of them are terrific people and they're, they're, they're very middle-of-the-road and solid human beings, but others there are just... Are just straight out of central casting to be so exploited should, by the should other Should Labor side. just say no more donations, no more links to the CFME? No, I think they should say that we will take donations as the Greens and the Liberals Party take from businesses uh, on, on proper terms. And if, uh, you know, the party is properly registered and is essentially, uh, you know, there in, for all... Uh, you know, a bona fide operation, then it's fair for them to take donations from them uh, until such time as the laws change. And I don't think the laws are going to change very soon. Now, I've got views about donations both from businesses and from unions, which are reasonably well known. I don't really particularly like it. But hmm. I don't but, think you should yeah, single that's out a, that's one. A separate... It's a separate right. issue. And I don't think you should single out just one union because well, they've got one okay, loud Graham, mouth in their operation. I, I, look, I... I, I actually think if you were sitting there advising the opposition leader, you'd be saying, what is our real risk? And I reckon the CFMEU and the leadership, the ACTU, are real risk. He, he has embraced them, but, but, it, but their actions are out of his control. So every time, and we know damn well, the ACTU leadership and the CFMEU between now and election campaign is going to do something stupid, and he's going to be tied up with that. I'd be 
I'd be coming up with a form of words which walks him away from them. At the moment, he's too close and, and they, their actions are out of his control. That's a risk. All right, we better go. Graham, Bruce, good to talk to both of you. We'll catch up next week. Thank you.